Hello, I'm Andrew Malloy, the Automation Wizard, and I'm going to go through setting up Obsidian for Para, uh, or the uh, Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. Um, I went through his course in Cohort 11, um, and you may have come across his blog and system for Para, which is Projects, Areas, Research, and Archive. So. Uh, Lots of people using uh, Evernote, Notion, Roam, uh, but I think the growth of Obsidian as a tool, and I myself have actually moved to Obsidian, uh, you may be wondering how you actually set up uh, Para in Obsidian. So this is how I do it. Uh, basically starting from scratch, uh, here's uh, the app open. Uh, I'm on Windows at the moment, but this will look identical on the Mac as well. So you come up with the menu when you open Obsidian the first time. Uh, you can also get to this menu by clicking on the Vault icon menu in Obsidian, uh, if you're already using Obsidian. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a new Vault from scratch. Uh, so it'll be empty. Uh, I'm just going to give this the name of Para. So my keyboard works. Para. Uh, where will I create it for the moment? I'm just going to place it on my desktop. So the nice thing with Obsidian is that you can always just move the entire folder elsewhere. Uh, I advise that you do put it in some kind of syncing service, um, such as Dropbox or even pay for Obsidian's own syncing service, uh, just because this will help, help you later on for quick capture and using other tools with it. Uh, okay, so I've got to create. Okay, so this is a new fresh vault from Obsidian. Just going to open it up. And here's my power vault. So this is how I would set up Para in Obsidian, is I'd create a folder for each uh, section. So um, projects, and notice I put a one there as well in the name. I'm going to create another one, call this areas. Research. And then fourth one, the uh, archive. Okay, so the reason I put the numbers there is because this is just basically a localized folder system. Uh, it won't necessarily be in the order you want to arrange the folders, it'll be in alphabetical order. Uh, so I put the numbers in there to strictly make sure it's in the order that I want to see them. It's up to you if you want to change that. Uh, there may be a plugin to auto sort this or sort the view. I'm not sure on that. Um, but as you can see, the order here uh, is just related to changing by uh, time, uh, which may be relevant if you want to see things in context of, of most recently used. Uh, but for me, I prefer to just have a fixed hierarchy. Uh, it's easier to find things for myself. So that's basically it for the first level. And then the next level, uh, I would advise you use folders again. So for every project, uh, so let's call this project one. Uh, no, actually, not confuse ourselves with the numbers, project A. Uh, let's have another project, project B. Uh, I'll do area as well, A and area B. And as you can see, it's auto sorting them alphabetically. So I'm just going to drag these into projects and then these into areas. So the reason these should be, or I think they should be folders, uh, subfolders, rather than notes, is it's easier then to pull everything together, uh, not only for multiple notes, but also any other files. Uh, one thing I found with Obsidian uh, that's a big advantage is you can actually 
just pull in everything relevant in context, uh, any kind of file, rather than just notes. Uh, I know you can sort of do that with PDFs and things in, in other note-taking apps, but this is like literally anything, any kind of large multimedia file or literally anything. I've, I've had um, executables and uh, coding scripts and things uh, that when it's relevant uh, to this, I've just put all within the same uh, subfolder. Uh, the other thing I would do here is then actually create a note. I'm going to call this project A. So with the same subfolder name uh, within that as well. So this is then becomes the overall view of that project. So we may have multiple files, multiple notes here, uh, but I like to have this kind of effectively an index or um, contents file for the overall project uh, in there. So this is the basic structure uh, that I'd set up and this is it. It seems like it may be a lot of work and it certainly is uh, because we're dealing with folders as well uh, compared to things like Notion uh, which is all just blocks. Um, but you'll see that this becomes more intuitive uh, especially if you actually look at how it's set up on your computer. So I'm just going to open up the actual Windows Explorer here. So uh, this becomes a lot more obvious now if I go into into the folder, so we have this .obsidian folder. Uh, depending on your setup, you may not even see this uh, uh, folder, but um, this is basically your structure. So you can see it's just a very normal computer file and folder structure. Uh, so this will then become far more intuitive for you to see why we set up things in this way. Uh, it's a lot easier to actually search through and reference either. Uh, later on or from a different tool or just from from Windows Explorer itself and that's basically it and then you can easily just drag things around as you need them uh, and the same thing with the other parts of Para. Uh, so that's basically it for setting up, setting up for Para uh, the basic level. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to make another video about going beyond Para uh, so hit the notification bell as well to uh, see that.